Hello everyone. Good evening. Today we'll discuss a very short topic that is phototherapy, which is very important five mark question in your theory exam and also in your viva session for both MBBS and for MD pediatric students. Post graduates, okay. So why use a phototherapy? Phototherapy is used in neonatal jaundice. Fine. In neonatal jaundice, what is the criteria to use phototherapy? This criteria is mainly based on total serum bilirubin this tsb is total serum bilirubin when the child's total serum bilirubin is more than 95th percentile according to aap normogram chart fine when the child's total serum bilirubin falls under the phototherapy range in the particular uh, graph that is particular chart that is aap normogram chart then you have to start on the phototherapy for that child okay so this chart is based on the child's gestational age and day of life and also the total serum bilirubin levels the chart that is based on gestational age day of life total serum bilirubin and also one other thing it is the risk factors the risk factors uh, the risk factors that includes uh, i mean in the risk factor that you should include in the chart involves hemolytic anemia that is when the mother is uh, ab i mean abo incompatibility or rh incompatibility so you have to include that and there is a hemolytic isoimmune anemia or when the child has a g6 pd deficiency third when the child is asphyxia fourth when the child has an episode of a hypothermia or the child is being under the treatment for sepsis and next and the child has hypoalbuminemia these are taken as risk factors on this AAP normogram chart okay this is also being included in this chart so this is a very important question what are the criteria in AAP normogram chart that is being included that can be asked in your MCQ question in need PG it is gestational age it is day of life total serum bilirubin level and the risk factors these are the four parameters that is being seen in AAP normogram chart I will show you that chart also in this video okay next so what is the mechanism of this mechanism what is the mechanism of this phototherapy mechanism here here is this converts so phototherapy converts the insoluble bilirubin insoluble bilirubin here is our unconjugated bilirubin it converts the insoluble bilirubin into a soluble one into a soluble isomers that's so that it is being excreted in so it is excreted in urine fine this insoluble bilirubin that is our unconjugated our unconjugated bilirubin is insoluble in water it is being a lipid soluble one so this unconjugated bilirubin can easily cross the blood brain barrier and enter the cns which will cause bind bind is nothing but bilirubin induced neurological damage this bilirubin induced neurological damage can be of two one is acute or can be chronic in chronic this is a separate topic we'll deal it separately okay separate short note bind is a separate short note for you so the chronic bind or a chronic bilirubin induced a neurological damage you call it as kernictris that is the child will present with uh, this choreoathetoid or extrapyramidal cerebral palsy so to prevent this uh, bind features you are giving the phototherapy to the child when the child has a bilirubin level of phototherapic range okay next what are the in we will see the detailed about this mechanism first is structural isomerization structural isomerization is the main mechanism structural isomerization is the main mechanism sorry it is a main major mechanism it is an irreversible one here this is directly proportional to the phototherapy that is dose of the phototherapy phototherapy you can give it a single surface or a double surface phototherapy so it is directly proportional to the dose of the phototherapy what is directly proportional because here in structural isomerization our bilirubin 
is being converted into bilirubin is being converted into lumirubin this conversion of this lumirubin is directly proportional to the dose of phototherapy okay and this is being rapidly excreted in urine next second is configuration isomerization configurational isomerization in this configurational isomerization it is a fort it is also called as photo isomerization here Z isomers, this is Z. Z isomers are converted into E isomers. Here, but the conversion to Z to E is a rapid conversion, but excretion is slow. The clearance of this E isomer is slow. So, clearance of E isomers is a slow process. Next, it is a reversible one. The E isomers, uh, when you give a phototherapy, around 25% of the total serum bilirubin is being converted into E isomers that is being excreted in the urine. If the excretion takes a slow process, so the time duration for the clearance to happen is around 8 to 12 hours of phototherapy. When the child is being in the phototherapy light for about 8 to 12 hours, this mechanism happens and the clearance also happens. Okay. Next, third mechanism is photo oxidation third mechanism is photo oxidation this photo oxidation is a slow process here bilirubin is being converted into here bilirubin is converted into small polar products is converted to small polar products that is being excreted in urine but this is a less important mechanism this photo oxidation so the three main mechanisms are structural isomerization configurational isomerization and next is photo oxidation fine next we'll discuss in detail about phototherapy so phototherapy we use a blue green light you use a blue green light for phototherapy the wavelength these are all important one mark question and also your viva session question the wavelength that is being used is 460 to 490 nanometer this is the wavelength next third important one is irradiance irradiance level is around 30 microwatt per centimeter square per nanometer okay next the distance between here we'll see the distance between the baby and the light so the distance between the baby and the light should you have to maintain between 30 to 45 centimeter should be maintained the baby should be uh, i mean only the baby should be wearing the diaper and the ipad should be worn but the other things should not be covered either like dresses neonatal dresses should not be used the baby should be lying in the normal uh, basin and or in the warmer okay so the distance is 30 to 45 centimeter the light should be a perpendicular to the baby the light used here is one can be compact fluorescent light or led can be used okay light emitting diode this light emitting diode is the one which has a high efficacy compared to CFL okay next after starting this phototherapy when will you repeat the uh, total serum bilirubin the total serum bilirubin should be repeated every 12 to 24 hours it should be repeated every 12 to 24 hours if the two values if two values of the bilirubin that is total serum bilirubin is below the cutoff 
if two values of total cerebellorubin are below the cutoff then you can stop the phototherapy okay after stopping phototherapy you can again you have to again check the total serum bilirubin that is 12 to 24 hours after stopping the phototherapy to check for any rebound uh, jaundice next is complication last so complication of phototherapy are one dehydration because of the heat the light okay next the child can develop hypocalcemia third uh, in a uh, child with conjugated hyperbilirubinemia when you give this phototherapy the child can go for bronze baby syndrome so this is seen in babies with higher conjugated hyperbilirubinemia okay so this is a short video on our your phototherapy okay thank you let's discuss on other topics